Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions, and here's another demo of the uh, new track editor tool that I've uh, been developing at Pen Productions. Let's just take a look what it does here. We've got a uh, quick teapot on screen. It then shows all the tracks for that teapot. Move the teapot around, and it'll update and show the track values changing. Very easy to edit the track values right in uh, track editor. We can just right click and scrub sideways uh, on any one of the tracks, and it'll uh, input the data directly into it. If it's moving too fast for you, hold down Alt, just like uh, spinners and Max. And again, just like spinners, hold down Control, and it'll speed up the action of the sliding side to side, so that you can get the cut type of solution that you're looking for. Let's add a bend modifier. And with a bend modifier, we can go and turn on modifiers. Now we can see all the modifier tracks being uh, displayed here. So we don't even need the modifier uh, panel open because we can go into something like the bend angle and just be able to scrub it side to side to be able to bend it and the direction. Now, if you notice, these are coming up um, yellow in their current values. And they're coming up yellow now because there's no controllers by default applied to those properties of the objects. Anything that's coming up just uh, the default gray tone, there's actually um, already controllers that have been applied. And once we animate this, we turn on animate, and we go along to a track, let's say, and just start uh, animating tracks or moving it ourselves, you'll actually notice that those tracks that have been animated have now come up with uh, animation um, red parameters on them, and they're showing up highlighted in that value. Same thing with the angle. If I just go and animate that, you can see now that it's an animated uh, parameter as well, and is going to show up red from now on. Now, what are the advantages of the uh, track editor over other solutions for being able to put some of these values in is that it combines those values together. So if I go and make another teapot, for instance, so now we have two teapots picked. I can pick both teapots, and it's actually combining these values together and showing this both at the same time. So I'm just going to, again, turn on Animate. And with them both uh, chosen, I'm going to go into the X position and just slot it. You can see now we're slotting both of the uh, objects, and we're animating both of them. So if I check the uh, new teapot, we'll see that that track's been animated as well. Check uh, With both of them selected, you'll notice the bend modifier shows up, even though it's not on both of the object and not instanced across them, which means I could also go in and add on to here a bend modifier again. And even though they're not instanced, both the bend modifiers are showing up as one. So it's actually combining them together. It looks for the names and it follows the uh, subanim name tree down and compares them and says, well, if they're the same, just show them right on top of one another. So we've got both. Now you'll notice that the angle doesn't come up animated at this point. It's only animated on one. It depends on which one gets picked uh, second as to whether it's going to show red or not. But now we can actually go in and animate both of those again and it's animating both of them and offsetting the value. Now something you might want to do is reset both of these back together again. So uh, reset them back to zero would be easy. I'm just going to pick the first, shift pick the last, and now we have a type in dialog. And currently that type in dialog is set to absolute values as opposed to relatives. So I can easily say zero that out, and we pop the all those uh, tracks back to zero. We could also do that in an offset fashion, so if I pick both, for instance, and they're in different X uh, values, and I turned off the uh, um, absolute and turned it back on to relative, you'll see the value comes in at zero. I could then offset those values by 50 units, and you'll see now that it's, it's added 50 onto both. So you'll see that one's 50 and one's at 85. So it's actually added them together. Now when we select them, Currently, the value that's being shown is the first selected object. So you can see that it's showing 50 or it's showing 85. We have another option here. If we say display first uh, track value, turn that off so it's no longer showing the first track value. It's actually showing an average value of the two. So you can actually get the average to where they are, which would be very easy to go in and we'll just say absolute. I'm just going to grab that uh, current value. I'm going to turn it back off of uh, absolute, and I'm going to type in a negative sign and paste that value back in, and I can actually find the zero average of the two very quickly. Start again with a couple more teapots, 
And I'm going to go in and freeze transforms on these. So now the, the transforms are frozen. So we can see that the, the uh, frozen transform tracks are showing up. And currently right now all the tracks are showing up. And this can be a little bit of a headache. Probably going to add a um, uh, active list controller filter as well at some point. But currently right now one of the things that would happen is if we were animating and I were to take all these objects and move them, for instance, you'd see that their position values are currently animated um, and the uh, frozen track is not. So we could also rotate them as well. And again, same thing, you can see that the rotation tracks now are animated. So if we turn on the animation filter, it'll only show us those animated tracks no matter what they are. So now we're getting those animated tracks in there. Um, and we've got you know, much simpler looking UI. Very easy to be able to zero these values. Just put it back to absolute, grab all of them, type in zero, and we've zeroed the uh, objects back out. Of course, you can also use the right click transform to zero, but this will also work when we're uh, dealing with other values that don't have that feature. Other filters to be able to show or other tracks to be able to show. We've got object properties, so if we just uh, go and show that, we have the object, object properties for the teapot. Now you'll notice that it's not showing up. That's because we are currently showing the uh, animated tracks. Turn that off, or maybe if I turn off modifiers and whatnot, I can get down to the radius now. So I can actually see the radius of that track and be able to animate it moving up and down you know, and uh, scaling the object using the radius value of it. Now I want, might, might want these two radius values actually to be connected together now and actually have them drive one another. A couple of different ways of doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and open up the menu that allows us to be able to do several things. One, track values to zero, so I just zeroed out that value. I can also uh, open the controller dialog if there is one, so if the uh, it has a pram wire or something of that sort, it'll open up the dialog. I can also do things like copy controller. Now you'll see that there's a checkbox beside here already. That's because I've previously actually copied a controller. So there's one sitting in, sitting in memory already. I'm going to copy this controller, specifically this radius. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to paste it on the radius over here. And I'm going to say paste instance. So now I've actually tied the two together. So when I change them, they're actually connected together uh, permanently because the controller has actually been instanced across the two. I can also just directly paste the controller so that it's not an instance. Or another one that's nice and fast is just the paste, in, uh, paste selected controllers. So what that'll do is it'll allow us to be able to do it really, really quick and fast and down and dirty. So let's just grab, uh, for instance, and filter back to our position data here. I'm going to say, you know what, I want to actually connect directly the X tracks of these two. So I'm just going to select um, the X track, pull up the dialog, and I'm going to say instance selected controllers. Because there's multiple controllers that are actually represented in that one track, it's going to now connect them together. It's just that fast. So instead of having to say copy paste, I can just grab them all and do it. So again, it could even be inside of you know one object, and I could grab multiple tracks or have multiple things picked and say, let's grab all these and let's connect all of these together so they're all sharing the same controller. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to say instance selected controller. And sure enough, now you'll see that when I move it up and down, they're indeed actually moving in the Y as well side to side. So they're that simple to connect up. I also want to uh, create a, a disconnector and uh, uh, make unique uh, as well to break them back up again. So now we've got um, uh, a few different options. We can also pram wire. So let's just start again with a couple more teapots. And this time we're going to go in and grab, I'll just freeze transforms. And we can go in and use, for instance, our blue one here. I'll right click. And I'll say set param master, which you can see again previously I've set one before the uh, demo started. So it has a little check mark beside it saying there's already one in memory, but I can just overwrite that by checking it again. I can go over to the uh, other teapot now, and I can again, I can use multiple tracks. So I could say, well, let's actually affect the Z, and let's actually affect the Y rotation as well. And I want to right click on both of those, and I want to right click, I want to say set param wire slaves. And you'll notice that two parameter wire dialogs has been uh, uh, created. And now I've actually got one teapot driving the other. So I can easily just input my uh, uh, expressions, change them up as I like, and I've got them there. So once again, because these 
objects now have parameter wires on them. So our, our red teapot here, you can see that the actual track comes up in black now saying that can't be animated. So if I try and scrub on that, you'll see it can't be animated. It won't allow it to happen. Text box comes up, so I still might want to actually be able to copy and paste the value to somewhere else. What I can do, however, is right click on it and say open controller dialog and it pops open the controller dialog and shows that to me again so that I can work with my uh, connections as I'd like. Last one that is uh, select in track view. So we've got the position so select in track view we will open up our track view dialog and it will show you the track currently selected and highlighted in there. So we can easily grab multiple tracks again see our driving object here and say well let's see all the position tracks highlight them all select in track view and there's all the track view uh, values that are being shown so far. It can also be docked, floated left, right, and docked into the dialog. We can also show um, material properties as well, and that'll show the full material tree and all of its animatable properties again, condensed together as long as the paths to, eat, uh, to any one of them is the same. Hope you enjoy uh, Track Editor when it gets released.